Hello everyone, and welcome to the first video in a series of many where we will explore the VBA program language. So we're going to learn the skills necessary to go out and write our own scripts in order to automate and customize different aspects of the Office applications. However, before we actually get into writing the scripts, we have to learn the fundamentals and basics. So remember back when you were in elementary school and you had to learn how to add? Well, we had to teach you how to count first before we could teach you how to add. The same analogy applies here. We need to teach you the core fundamental concepts that are centered around program languages in order to actually go out and build quality scripts. So we're going to have to teach you things like data types, object models, for loops, properties, and methods and a whole host of other things in order to build your foundation in order to then go out and build a script. In this particular video, we're going to cover two different things. The first is we're going to discuss what is exactly VBA. So what is the VBA program language? What is this, this language behind the scenes that we use in order to automate and customize our Office applications? The second part of this video is going to focus on something called the developer tab. Now we need to be able to write our script, so we're going to use an editor to do that. However, to access that editor, we have to enable it through the developer tab. So we have to click a button and that will take us to our editor. But by default, that developer tab is not visible when we install Office. So we're going to walk through the steps necessary so that way we can see that tab and then access our editor. However, we're on the first part. So what is VBA? So what is this program language that we see behind the scene? Well, VBA was developed by Microsoft and it stands for Visual Basic Application. And really, we use VBA to automate and customize different parts of Office applications. So say, for example, we had a range of cells and we wanted to loop through each of those cells and ask a certain question. So maybe we were looking at the cell value and we said, hey, if the cell value equals a certain amount, we want that script to do something. So maybe we want to change the background color. Well, we can do that and we can automate that task by using VBA. So we can actually write the script that will go through that range of cells and then do each of those steps. We can also use it to customize Office so we can bring in new functionality that doesn't currently exist. Now, something that a lot of people don't know about is they, they usually always know that VBA is related to Office applications, but VBA is also used in non-Office applications like Notepad and Paint. So there are applications that aren't in the Office suite that actually use VBA in the background. Some history lesson for us, uh, VBA was released in 1993 with Excel 5.0, and when it was released, it was very popular among Excel users because they found that, hey, I can save myself a lot of time simply by just writing a couple lines of code, or I can all of a sudden add new functionality to my applications that I wasn't currently able to do. So it was very popular in the beginning, and so Microsoft invested heavily to develop the VBA language and the whole user experience. However, around 2008, Microsoft did discontinue maintaining VBA. So though we can still use it, they are not actively improving it. The uh, best thing we get right now is they'll release an object or two uh, for the new features that are used in Excel. However, even some of that is being discontinued. Some of the new features like related to the importing of data, uh, we'll find that it's actually limited. We can't do certain things with those objects in VBA. The reason why they discontinued it was because they want us to move over to another program language called JavaScript. And in JavaScript, there's something called an API that will allow us to write code to automate the Office application. However, that API is still very much in development. So it doesn't have all the same features that we might be used to when we're in the VBA environment. And the problem is even worse if you go to other applications in Office. So for example, if you were to go to PowerPoint, you would be dramatically limited with the what we could actually automate using the JavaScript API. But they are developing it. And over time, it's getting better and better with each new update. So 
plan to kind of move over to that JavaScript API because it's definitely the direction Microsoft wants us to, to head. And the final thing that we need to know about VBA is it is considered an event-driven program language. Well, all this means is that we have an Excel application or just an application in general, and that application won't do anything until it identifies an event that takes place. Well, what is an event exactly? Well, we do, in some cases, hundreds or even thousands of events in Excel all the time. A simple example is clicking a button. When we click a button, that is considered an event in the Excel application language. When that event happens, Excel will register that event took place, and then it will determine how should I respond to that event. So for example, say I click the button that changes the background of my cell. Excel will then register that that button was clicked, and then it will say, well, what should I do in that situation? Oh, I'm supposed to change the background color of a cell. So I'm going to respond accordingly and then change the background. It's actually a lot easier to understand this concept when we record macros. All we're doing when we enable the macro recorder is we're just kind of keeping a log of all the events that take place within a given time frame. So every time that we click a cell or click a button, each one of those events is registered and we see the code that, rec that basically represents that event. The problem with the macros though is that it records every single event. So even though the events that really are just trivial, so window scrolling and maybe just clicking one cell and then clicking another cell but not actually doing anything, each one of those events are recorded and though it might not be necessary for our code, VBA doesn't know the difference so it just records all of it. So we'll find that with the macros we can always lean out our code in almost 98% of the situations we can almost always lean out our code because a lot of those, the, that, those lines of code are just kind of filler. They're not really necessary for our script to work. The other problem though is when we use a macro recorder is it only registers events that take place within that particular application. So for example, if I was to copy a range of cells from Excel into PowerPoint, it will only recognize the Excel events when I use the Excel macro recorder. So the actual pasting in the PowerPoint application wouldn't be recognized by the Excel uh, macro recorder. So that's just kind of one of the limitations when we're using the macro recorder and that kind of forces us to then go into VBA and write our own scripts. <clears throat> so what are some common things that we create with VBA? Well, the first one that we usually do is add-ins. Add-ins add new functionality that doesn't currently exist in the Excel application. So for example, imagine that we wanted to manipulate uh, PDF files. Well, there's already an add-in that does that. It's for Acrobat. And Acrobat will allow us to then take our worksheet and you know, split it into different types of PDF files. Well, currently that functionality doesn't really exist within the Excel application, or at least in this very customizable way. But when we add the Acrobat add-in, we now get that new functionality. Well, a lot of the stuff behind the scenes is written in VBA. So that when we write that, that, those, that code in VBA, we then add the new functionality to the Excel application. We also add, sorry, we also create sub-procedures. Sub-procedures are basically just lines of code and we execute them in a certain order. So for example, click cell one, change the value. Then go to sheet two, click another cell, change that value. Each line of that code is then stored within a procedure. So I always kind of like to think of it as like an assembly line. Do this step first, then do this step, then do this step, then do this step. So that sub-procedure are just all the steps that we place within a particular task. The final thing that we use VBA for is to create user-defined functions. So these are functions that don't currently exist within the Excel application. So for example, a cube function where I take a number and then return the cube of that number. Well, right now there is no function in Excel that does that for us. However, there's nothing stopping us from going into VBA and creating that function ourselves and then being able to use that function within a workbook or other workbooks of our own. So it allows us to customize Excel in that manner by adding new functions that we didn't currently have.
Now that we've talked about what VBA is, let's move on to the second part, the developer tab. The developer tab will allow us to access the VBA editor directly. If we didn't have the developer tab enabled, we could access the VBA editor, but it would require us pressing keyboard shortcuts. I find it easier to just kind of go to the ribbon, click the tab, and then we're good to go. Along with accessing the VBA editor, we can record macros. We can see all the macros that we currently have stored in our workbook or our personal workbook. We can enable add-ins directly from our developer ribbon. And if we want, we can insert things like buttons into our worksheet and then assign the macros that we record to those buttons. So when we click the button, that macro will run. However, by default, when we install Excel, the developer tab is hidden. The nice thing is though, enabling it is very simple. And once we enable it, we can get all this new functionality added to Excel. So let's go and actually enable the developer tab for us. So I'm in my Excel workbook, and as you can see, I have a ribbon at the top. But in my ribbon, I have the developer tab enabled. If this is the first time you've ever actually opened Excel, or maybe you just did a fresh install of Excel, you will not see this developer tab up here at the top. We need to enable it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the far left to the section called File. I'm going to click it. And then I'm going to go down to Options. Ooh, little pop-up. This new window will pop up. And then I'll see more options. I'm going to go down to the section that is called Customize Ribbon. From here, I'm going to see two different sections. One is choose commands from and customize the ribbon. I'm going to go over to customize the ribbon and I'm going to look for the developer tab. If you see it like this with no check in the box, it means that it's hidden and it's not enabled. By putting a check in the box, it will enable the developer tab and we'll be able to see it. When I press OK, my rib ribbon will refresh and I can now see the developer tab. Go to it, and then we're gonna see a bunch of new icons that we didn't originally see. This one will take us to the Visual Basic Editor. So if I click it, it will open Visual Basic, and I can start writing code. If I click this one, I can see all the macros that I have in my current workbooks. Now, I have a lot because I've written a lot, but for most people, they might not have this many. I can also record a macro and assign a shortcut key and determine where I want to store this macro in a personal macro workbook, a new workbook, or even this workbook. I can also determine macro security levels. So whether I want to disable all macros, if I want to be asked before I disable all the macros, or just disable all of them except for specific ones. And then the other one is enable all macros. I have this set to enable all macros because I design my own macros, so I'm not worried about potential viruses. Uh, but you should kind of keep that in mind. If you're taking other people's macros and you don't actually see the code, you should always kind of check that first. We can also add add-ins. So we can enable them right here from the ribbon. If I click this one, I'll see the Office add-ins. These are the Excel add-ins, so things like the Analysis Tool Pack. And then the com add-ins, things like uh, power map, power pivot. And then also we can insert things like buttons. We'll ask if I want to insert a macro to it. And then a new button will be put into my worksheet. But I don't need a button. And then some other things that are more related to the design mode. But other than that, that completes this first video. So in the next video, we are going to look at the Visual Basic Editor in detail. So we're going to see how it's laid out, and we're going to see all the functionalities that exist within the VBA Editor. And then finally, we're going to see ways that we can customize our VBA Editor in order to meet our needs. For this video, if you have any questions about what we went over, so things like VBA or the Developer tab, please put them down in the comments below, and I'll try to get back to you.